Hello, hello, hello. We're nearing the end of 2024 and it's time to look ahead. I've done some research and found 18 games that I think look amazing. I generally can't wait to play all of these games. So let's get to it. First up, we have Falling Frontier. I think I've talked about this game a few times on this channel and it's been delayed a few times as well. It will now release sometime next year. And I mean, it's hard to develop a game and if you're one person or a small studio, things in life happen and you have to prioritize. A complete game is always better than something half-baked. Falling Frontier is an RTS set in space with a procedurally generated star system. You establish your spaceport in a new system in order to explore. Once you have your spaceport established, you can start to upgrade it, gather resources, colonize planets. I mean, you can upgrade almost every aspect of the spaceport in order to make progress. Or to defend yourself, because you're not alone. Other factions are here as well, and battles are a big part of the game. And it looks like you can go at it in a few different ways. You can of course focus on specific upgrades, make small strike forces or build massive fleets in order to overpower your enemies. And there are certainly a ton of different aspects to the game and the battles in the game. I do like the clean look of the game, it almost looks cinematic at times. I just hope the strategic depth is here in the battles. But I do love myself some space strategy games from time to time so looking forward to this one. Next up we have Sword of the Sea, a very pretty adventure game with high speed gameplay. It's from the studio Giant Squid, who have made Abzu and The Pathless. The visionary artist behind these two games and Journey is also working on this game. And I must say, it shows. It definitely looks a lot like Journey, like a lot. But I think it still has its own soul, style and gameplay. And much like the other games, this game is also all about telling a story through color, light, music and minimal dialogue. To traverse the different environments, you have your sword that works much like a snowboard. You can of course do tricks on it and yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. And it's definitely going to be some interesting platforming you'll have to do with this snowboard sword. To me, this studio hasn't made a bad game yet, so this is an instant buy. These games are a bit niche, so they might not be for everyone, but Man, does it look good. Then we have Little Nightmares 3, a side-scrolling kind of horror adventure game. I haven't played any of the previous titles in the series, but I plan to play both before the third one gets released. I think the art style is amazing, it's super clean and distinct, really makes everything pop, and they really nail the horror vibes. It is certainly a creepy game, and you play as low and alone, as they try to find a way out of the nightmare they are stuck in. Both characters have their own items to use, a bow and a wrench, so you'll definitely have to work together to progress and overcome obstacles. The game can be played alone or in co-op, and I think you'll definitely have a better time playing with a friend or partner than alone. Then we have Bogdan's Cross, an action-adventure game that gives some Banner Saga vibes with a bit of Ori atmosphere and style. I think it looks great. The game has an action combat system, and you play as Bogdan, a sheep herder turned into a Templar Knight. The game and its story is grounded in historical accuracy, but it is a fictional narrative. It feels like the narrative side of the game is important, and I hope you can impact the story a bit where it goes, that would be really neat. The game is open world, so you can choose where to go and what to explore. And you of course have treasures to find, abilities to gain, there are puzzles here and there, so hopefully it's a world filled with stuff to do. I'm kind of interested in how this will work, because it looks to be in 2D when you travel, and then the sections where you fight is a bit more open, so I wonder how the open world will work. But yeah, a great art style, it looks amazing. Next up is Bionic Bay. I think I've covered this one before, but it's a 2D action adventure game with an interesting teleportation mechanic. It's a fast-paced game where you can swap position with an item you have just touched. So the game kind of morphs into a puzzle game where you're trying not to die as you escape. You're playing a scientist trying to escape an ancient bio-enhanced world that is filled with dangers. It reminds me a lot of Playdead's games, Inside and Limbo. Same kind of dark vibes and interesting mechanics. This one looks a bit more frantic, and I'm sure you're gonna do a lot of mistakes in this game before you learn and overcome certain obstacles. But it looks super cool. Then we have Warden's Rising. 
It looks to be a tower defense styled game, at least as its foundation. On top of that, you have an isometric action RPG where you run around shooting, helping out your defenses. The game features a campaign where you fight against interdimensional threats. You unlock buildings and other defenses as you play. You have five heroes to choose from. There is a whole gearing system in the game. You have perks to unlock. There are unique abilities for the characters. So fleshed out on that front, the game can also be played in co-op, I think it's 4-play co-op. There are of course also specific co-op challenges to overcome. Personally, I love tower defense games, and when these games try to do something more, it's usually a good time, or at least interesting. I do think this game looks clean, it's vibrant. I like that the game's perspective is very zoomed out, and that you get a top-down view when you're building your defenses. It looks thought out, so hopefully it's challenging as well. Next up is Rhythm Storm. When I'm looking at this, it feels like a new Geometry Wars. Damn, I love those games back in the day. The structure of this game is a roguelike, bullet heaven, survival type game, with an emphasis on rhythm. You the player aren't affected by the music, and nothing you do needs to be done to the beat of the music. The rest of the game, however, will follow the beat and flow of the music. So when the enemy spawns, for example, when they shoot and so on, the UI and everything in the game will also react to the music. Before you start a stage, you have a few vehicles to choose from. There are different power-ups and so on to choose from. I hope there is some progression and unlocks in the game. It's always nice with some driving factors. But I love the neon look of the game, and incorporating music into the gameplay is nothing new, but it fits well and will definitely lead to some interesting gameplay. My only concern for this game is it will probably be hard to read where you are and dangers coming at you, but we'll see. Then we have one of the most anticipated games for 2025, I think, and that's Slay the Spire 2. I think the first one was the biggest deck building roguelite out there, and it really made the genre popular. The second game will enter early access sometime next year, and it's rebuilt from the ground up. There will be new game modes, it has updated visuals, they will also make it easier to mod the game. I think that's a very underappreciated function, allowing modders in to change and alter the game and to be able to share it with the rest of the community. It can lead to some truly amazing things. There will of course be new slayers to play with their own cards and mechanics. It's really nice to see that they are making a sequel. The first one came out 5 years ago, so it doesn't really feel like a money grab. And with an early access release, they will most certainly tailor the game to what the audience wants it to be. Don't forget to leave a like if you like this video, and consider subscribing for more lists, gameplay videos and reviews. Okay, thank you, let's get back to the games. Next up is Hyper Light Breaker. Probably the one game I look forward to the most next year. This one will also enter Early Access 2025. This is a fast-paced action-adventure game that will take you to countless procedurally generated worlds filled with enemies and mysteries. As you play, you will unlock new weapons, items, upgrades, there are bosses to encounter, tons of enemies. The game sounds and I think plays like a roguelite. And from what I understand, you also have a settlement in the game that bring back resources to, and that will probably lead to more systems and upgrades for your character. This is from the developer's Heart Machine that have made Hyperlight Drifter previously, which has an isometric view kind of with pixelated graphics. They've also made Solar Ash. There they went full 3D, very high speed game with some interesting mechanics, really like that one. So to me, they're really on point when it comes to game creation, game design. And to top it off, you can also play it in co-op, which is nice to see. I think it's definitely the biggest game they've made or tried to make, so hopefully it turns out great. Next up is Sacrifier. This is a really interesting RPG to me. It looks like a pretty standard JRPG, but it has incorporated a lot of platforming in a pixelated 2D style with 3D environments. The combat is also done in the same style and is real-time and turn-based at the same time. I don't really know exactly how this will work. You of course have companions that can be used in combat. The combat seems to be combo based with your companions. The game will blend both fantasy and sci-fi in its story and will try to subvert standard RPG tropes. These games usually live and die on the story combined with the combat and subverting tropes could be dangerous, like it's gonna hit or miss big. Like don't get me wrong, I like when games aren't too obvious, but I do think tropes exist for a reason, they usually work. 
and I would like to see more of the combat, how it works, how flexible is it, are there a ton of different abilities, weapons to make it interesting. But we'll see, I'm very excited for this one, it looks great, so fingers crossed. Then we have Kern, a game all about climbing. There aren't that many games focused around climbing. Jusant comes to mind, I really like that one. I think there's one in VR as well. This is more of a realistic climbing game that will have intuitive climbing and easy controls. And what's interesting here is that you'll be able to climb anywhere in the game. You play as Ava as she's trying to ascend Mount Kami, a summit that has never been reached. You will have to plan out your routes from the ground, solve problems as they arise during your climb, manage resources like chalk, finger tape, food, water, medicine in order to reach the top. Posture, effort and balance is also crucial to avoid falling. The game will also have some different climbing modes like Alpine and Free Solo. There will be challenges to tackle besides the main game. I mean, to me, this all sounds amazing. And I think this is the right approach to a climbing game. I just hope it turns out as good as it sounds. Next up is Reanimal. This is from the same studio that made Little Nightmares 1 and 2. The third one is developed by another studio. This one seems to be very similar to Little Nightmares though. Same style, but with a new story and world. And I really like that they keep doing what they do best, horror adventure games. In the game you play a brother and sister who's looking for their missing friends on a hellish island. The game can of course be played in co-op, either local or online, but holy shit, like Tarsus Studio really are the experts at atmosphere, statics, and making a game creepy. It looks so freaking good. Next up is The Midnight Walk. This one, much like Reanimal, looks amazing. It has such a distinct presentation as the game is made to look like clay. Not only that, but the entire game was made in clay first, 3D scanned, and then used in game. That is very ambitious, and I think it paid off. Nothing I have played look quite like this. In the game, you play as the burnt one, and with you, you have your friend Potboy. You embark on a journey throughout the world, surviving and outsmarting monsters along the way. What's cool here is that the game can be played in VR or on a regular display. For me, this is one of those games where I wish I had a VR headset. I'm not surprised that this game becomes like 50% better in VR. I just hope the gameplay is as interesting as the visuals. Too many times in games like these, gameplay comes second and the game suffers because of it. Then we have Hypercore Rhythm Bullet Hell. A bullet hell type game, obviously, but with boss battles and kind of F-Zero type stages. I really like the style of the game and the mash of elements. It reminds me a bit of Audio Surf combined with Returnal, and I think it could be really cool. The encounters in the game is semi-procedurally generated based on the music, which sounds cool. I hope it works well as well. And you can also use your own music in the game. It also supports two-player local battles. You have the score attack and time attack, so there are a few different ways to play the game. Then we have Chrono Sword, a Souls-like action RPG. I love the style of this game, it looks really good. The game overall is kind of dark, but has some colorful details here and there. The story of the game revolves around you traveling between the past and the future. And in the trailer they introduce a few characters, so I think the story will be a bit more straightforward than a traditional Souls-like game, but the time travel aspect is interesting to me, and I've hoped they use this to their advantage with you affecting what's in the world or how the world is proceed when you travel back and forth. In standard Souls-like fashion, you have several weapon types, stat points, items and equipment in order to play as you want, and hopefully they can make a challenging game with some interesting bosses and some cool mechanics. Next up is Mandragora, another Souls-like, but instead of an isometric view, this one is played in 2D with 3D assets. I love the look of this game. A very dark and unforgiving world, that's what it seems like at least. It has kind of a metroidvania type structure to it, as you explore a world in decline filled with monsters and bosses. As you level up there are skills to gain, a massive talent tree, equipment and upgrades. On top of that you have several classes to choose from, 
The story of the game revolves around an otherworldly plane that is interfering with yours and you can enter it with a lantern. I get some Lord of the Fallen vibes from this, but it definitely sounds interesting and you'll also have choices that will impact the game and the story. But yeah, looks amazing, can't wait to play this one. Next up is Lost Helden. This one is from Artisan Studios. They have previously made Astria Ascending, a very pretty JRPG with some mid-story combat and execution. Lost Helden is also a JRPG, but it looks to have an action combat system, but it's a bit hard to tell. The game is in 3D, but the assets are painted, which gives the game kind of a nice and distinct look to it. I hope the story is a bit better in this one and hopefully making Astra Ascending taught them a lot. In this one you'll have 8 characters making up your party and they are supposedly highly customizable. But as I mentioned previously in the video, to me an RPG needs to have an interesting story and a fun combat system that is somehow evolving or somewhat evolving during your playthrough. But this is definitely a title I'll keep my eye on. Next up is Hexadome Tactics a turn-based strategy game in PvP form. I think Final Fantasy Tactics got me into turn-based games, and I've played a ton since then, but never in PvP, I don't think. Hexadome Tactics is played 1v1. You assemble your team of champions and fight it out in an arena. The arena you fight in seems to change as you play, adding additional variables outside of the enemy champions to the mix, you also have to manage your action points if you want to use them immediately or save them up for later to deliver more devastating attacks, adding a bit to the strategy of the game. The champions you build your team from comes in a few different types, ranged, control, melee, support, and there might be a few more. They of course all have different strengths and weaknesses, so building a team should be fun and interesting. I really like the idea of this game. I just hope the fights aren't too long and that they're balanced. That was all the games I had for this list. Please leave a comment if you look forward to any of these games or if I missed any. I do think I have enough games for a follow up to this one. I just had to set a limit in order to get this video done. But thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.